Hello, dear friends. We will look today at the diary of Lieutenant Brand, an officer of the Wehrmacht. His diary goes from June 28, 1943, the year he considers the darkest year in all German history. So now let us begin. September 7th. The news of sorrow grows more and more often. We have given up Slavyansk. This is followed by Stalino and Gorlovka. It is clear that we will lose all of eastern Ukraine with Donbass. The fortifications before the bridge on the Kuban also cannot be kept, and the battle for Crimea will start up again. The ground that we are now missing, we will never get back. Do we intend to give back all the territory that we have captured in Russia? Is this necessary? Was it not better to propose it to Stalin as payment for peace without a struggle? Such measures are half-hearted. We would surely keep the front line here. Until December or January, in fact, there will be no danger to us. Sad news is becoming more frequent. We have surrendered the city of Slavyansk. It will be followed by Stalino and Gorlovka. Obviously, we will lose all of eastern Ukraine with Donbas. The fortifications in front of the bridge on the Kuban cannot be held either, and the battle for Crimea will begin again. What we are now losing, we will never get back. Are we really going to give back all the territory we have conquered in Russia? Is there any need for that? Would it not be better to offer it without a fight to Stalin as payment for peace? These are half measures. We would certainly have held the frontier. Until December or January, in fact, there was no danger to us. The second front is giving a bad feeling already now. Furthermore, it gives the impression that the British can capture southern Italy unopposed. Our retreat is everywhere, and we can still do it. But soon, we will reach the frontier, and the constant bombardment of Germany. The one thing everybody is hoping for now is the long-announced attack on Britain. I hope only that it will happen. In case it will not, it is over. Nothing is left for us but the hope of a miracle. September 8th. The civilians of the village were evacuated, but our supply wagon was shifted to 120 kilometers away to the rear, closer to the Dnieper. What a strange feeling it is to be suddenly found alone in an area that has been abandoned. There are dogs and cats howling because they are dying of hunger, hens with chickens wandering around. The chickens and roosters were slaughtered all. There were way too many of them. All the harvest remained in the fields. The sunflowers around are so numerous that we would be able to provide oil for a small city. It was a pity to see the rye, potatoes, and corn disappearing in vain. Also, cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, and thousands of pumpkins. A village has barns full of oats, barley, rye, and millet. It is all threshed, but it is impossible to get out. We could provide food for Berlin for a year using everything that is left here. It makes your blood curdle when you go through the fields. The civilians can only take a small part of their belongings with them. All the roads are loaded with property as it is. Some of the people are hiding in the cornfields. They do not want to leave. And in all this chaos, the Russian aircraft can find their targets easily. The misery of the civilians is very severe. The moans of women and the cries of children can be heard all around. At the same time, they are crying and singing monotonous, lamenting songs. While listening to these cries, the Germans think of Germany, suffering even worse. What a lot of valuable things have been ruined there. In my mind is our Berlin apartment. There were so many beautiful items, pictures, furniture books. September 9th. I send the last military property out of our warehouses, and I regret greatly that I have no transport for supplies. And yet, the front is getting closer. After giving up Stalino, it is hard to resist the advance of the Russians. Yet, our positions are advantageous, and the enemy advances not by the largest forces. No one would have imagined that its summer offensive could be so successful. A poor Germany. The severe knocks of fate follow rapidly one after the other. I wish that change would come. Oh, when will humanity, or old Europe at least, have its peace to work with? And when will we finally get to build our homes and garden again? We have just got the news of the unconditional capitulation of Italy. It is sunny, but I wish the earth could be covered in darkness. The last act of tragedy has begun. A dark and heavy winter is ahead of us there will now be hurried retreats. Poor Germany! Is this the end after so much struggling? It must not happen. Our useless politicians should have been kicked out a long time ago. The price we pay for their foolishness. But Germany has to live and keep all its rights, no matter what the cost. We must hold out, 
Germany, our motherland. What a beautiful world we saw when we were still full of hopes for the great tomorrow of our country. In Europe, there was a spring of nations, and Germany advanced a new great idea. But the Germans found themselves the victim of their own successes. As they became vain and conceited, our leaders no longer knew the measure. Hitler is a great figure. What he lacks is depth and vision. He is an amateur in practically all areas. Perhaps only in politics did he reach the peak of his development, but there too he has been hindered by his personal dogmas. It appears that he is a bad judge of people, and therefore he was derailed by the Byzantines and the flatterers. It was fatal for him that he did not have sensible, wide-eyed, and competent collaborators. Goring is probably the most popular of all our Führers, a man of practice and good sense. He is neither a theorist nor a dogmatist. We can rely on him and on his energy, but he also steps over corpses. Throughout the war, he is retreated far into the background. Will this star rise or fall? It depends on many factors and persons. Himmler is not a clean sheet of paper, like it seems to some naive people. Nothing but his actions speak for themselves. We can judge his convictions by his appearance. He must not be missed. The way he is going to follow will be closely related to the way Germany follows for a long time ahead. Goebbels is very smart and very cunning. He is as dodgy as an old-time intelligence man. However, he is a small person, not an extraordinary genius. Many times, he behaves against his conscience and beliefs, a backdoor politician, a third-class man a proletarian Talleyrand. Roust is a mediocre member of the Council of Public Enlightenment and a more than mediocre minister. His posture, his manner of acting and speech are alike Hitler, but with no ideas of his own. He is a known alarmist, an insignificant figure. Funk is a wonderful economic manager. He does not have exactly an Aryan look. He is clumsy and unattractive. A beautiful soul can barely be hidden in such a body. He has a financial economic strategy, a typical gambling game. He does not think very far ahead. It may be suggested that his criminal carelessness and unreasonable optimism were the reason why the war happened. Lay, in appearance similar to Funk, also conceited and selfish, evidently made from the same cloth. He is a rather basic mental faculty. He is a very mediocre arranger and a very poor orator. Rippentrop is Mr. Camilfo of the Third Reich empty exterior, and not much context. No doubt he is poorly educated. The man has no idea of the great sets of issues in Eastern and Southern Europe, and as regards the West and Anglo-Saxon states, he has absolutely nothing to say here. A parvenu that learned something in Britain, and yet a person with no real education or any depth. In addition to them, there are a whole mess of mediocre assistants and bureaucrats who imitate and woo the great ones by all means. What affects this generation horribly is the hard, bloody losses of the First World War. Moreover, in the military sphere, there is not a single big person, except Rommel. Nevertheless, our nation is strong, prepared to make sacrifices, and will be able to endure similar periods of mediocrity and powerless standing on the spot. We must only withstand the war. May the fates be merciful to us. One day we should be fortunate too. I wish we were powerful enough to defeat the Americans in a brave counter-strike into the Mediterranean Sea and finally begin the operations against Britain, which we were so long promised. Surely then the state of affairs would change radically again, and we might brave a new attack in the Donetsk region this spring. Then it would not be enough to expect a beneficial peace by the coming autumn. Only a question is do we have that many forces? September 10th Everywhere, the villages and countryside are in flames. It is such a disaster that we could not keep this land, which is so fertile, for at least a month longer. I have managed, despite all the trouble, to push our supply wagon further to the rear by 150 kilometers, and now I am ready to move in any minute when I get the order to follow it. We are in Nikolevsk, a large village of colonists, nearby Novomoskovsk. It is also not far to Nitropetrovsk now. For me, it was an excitement and at the same time a painful trip. There were fertile fields and flowering villages, and then again, endless columns of refugees, as well as many retreating regiments. Sometimes there were wild scenes of fleeing and mess. It always takes more blood and property to retreat than it does to advance. For what reason is there such a rush? No danger for us before the new year, and we can barely keep one division here. 
a lot of time will pass until the units will be in order. In Lusavaya, we have seen our commanding officer, von Mackensen. The glory is not achieved by him there. The moment he left the city, the Russians attempted their first tank attack at the opposite end of the city. I rarely witnessed such a mess, despite the fact that thousands of soldiers, many officers, and even a general being sent to defend it. And we wanted to make our way there, too, but we saw the tanks in return. It was too much unequal strength for us. Then our wagon was tried to be stopped for local defense, and it took a lot of trouble for me to obtain the men and wagons back again. This is all for today. Please support this video with a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Goodbye, and see you all soon.